History Project. Today is Friday, April 26, 2024. I'm Pastor Crespo Jr., the research librarian for the Bronx County Historical Society. And today I am joined by Jose Roman, also known as Mr. Spreebreak, a dancer, pioneering b-boy, and president of the Furious Rockers. Welcome, Jose. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for being here and, and making time out of, your, out of your tight schedule to be here with us. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Anything I missed out? No, you, you said it perfectly. Um, I'm really honored to be here. It means a lot to me and to the crew. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're glad you're here and we're going to get a piece of the Furious Rockers breaking history, you know, permanently etched in Bronx history today. Yes. Can we start out by talking about your parents? Sure. Where are they from? My parents, my mother was from Rio Pedra, okay. and my father was from Aguadilla. They met each other, and they both had a kid. And we, they moved to Bushwick. That's where I was raised at, in Bushwick, in my younger years. Okay. And that's where I learned how to up rock. Got it. What year did they move to Bushwick? Oh my God, that was so long, it's hard to remember. Got it. Yeah. Got it. I was a kid. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Do, you. do your parents ever talk about Rio Piedras or Aguadilla? Yeah, you they, know? They, they do. You know? At the time, yeah. they were speaking Spanish and I was only speaking English. And I went to my mother and I said, what kind of language is that? I want to learn, I told them. So everything I heard, I would ask, what does that mean? You know, right? Like I really wanted to learn Spanish. You're curious? I, yeah, I wanted. I wanted to learn it. Let me shut this off. Sorry. No worries. No worries at all. Yeah, like a lot of first generation Boricuas, we didn't grow up learning or speaking the language. Right. Right. Yes. A lot of New New York Ricans don't speak it well. But I was so interested in it that I speak it pretty good. I'm not great, but I speak it pretty good. Right. Yeah, you, you have any siblings, brothers and sisters? Yes, I have. Like I said, my mother and my father, they had their own children. Uh, I have a stepbrother and I have a stepsister. I have uh, my sister and my brother. They're my real family. Got it. They're, they're from, one, from my father and my mother. Okay. When, when you were a kid, what kind of music did your parents listen to at home? Oh, they listened to, um, oh God, salsa, merengue. Uh, my mother loved all that. She used to right. dance too, my mother. Really? She used to sing. One time a promoter wanted to promote my mother. Yeah, Tell us about and that. she didn't go through it. She was shy, my mother. Got it. Yeah. Got it. A lot of dance parties in your house? No. No? No. My mother's parents were very strict and quiet. Got it. Yeah. And what was the, uh, at home, what was your typical dinner? What did you eat? You know, what did you enjoy eating? Oh, my mother used to make um, white rice with, uh, oh God, pig's feet. Oh my God, pig's feet. Awesome. Right. Beautiful. So, and a lot of other stuff. My mother used to cook a lot of stuff. Right, right. Yeah, she was a good cook. Awesome, awesome. Like, yeah. like, like most Puerto Rican mothers are. Right, right. You know? The old uh, school moms. What neighborhood are you from in the city? Where do you come from? I came from Bushwick. Okay. First. That right. was the section that I was raised at in right. my younger years. That's right. where I learned up rock. Got it, got it. So talk to us about Bush Bushwick. What was it like? You know, when it you was were nice. Kid. It was a nice neighborhood. I loved it. Once I started that dancing, I really got into it. Oh, really? Yeah, I really got into it. My brother was a DJ at the time with his friend, and I helped him out with the records and, you know, the equipment and stuff like that. I was young. I was 11 years old. Oh, wow. So they would throw on Just Begun, and they, I would be up rocking. Right. And my brother, for some reason, he cut it off, and this girl said, why didn't you change the music? Your brother was going off. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's awesome. That's awesome. So what, uh, when, when did you leave Bushwick? What age were you? Oh, 
I was about 12. All right, all right, that's a good, that's a good age. What what kind of kid games do you remember playing? Oh, uh, kick the can, uh, Johnny and the Pony, uh, Skelly, all those street games. Right, right. Remember, we didn't have all what they have now. Cool. What, what's what's the best memory you have of living in Bushwick? Uh, well, we used to make a lot of clubhouses out of banded buildings. All right. Yeah, and we used to hang out in them a lot. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, when, 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 when you were a kid in That's New a York. memory of, of mine. Awesome. Awesome. So when did you, uh, so you, you moved from Bushwick to Coney Island, Coney Island. at 12 years old. Yeah, you what know why? What was it like? You know why? Tell me. Because right next door where we lived in Myrtle Avenue, huh? there was a gang called the Deadly Rebels. And I started to hang out with them. I even wore colors one time. And I saw my father and I said, take these colors off me before he beats me up. <laughs> wow. So what other gangs were in Bushwick when, when you were a kid that you remember? Any other gangs? I can't remember right now. I remember Kick the Can Got and it. all that. What, what, what was the, what's the difference from Coney Island to Bushwick? What are the biggest differences? Oh, it was a big scene. It was more, more um, entertainment there, you know? It was, right. I was working in the amusement park when I met Chiba. Right, and that's Astroland? I was, no, I was working a little way from Astroland, but that was when Astroland was around. Got it. Yeah. Um, so I met Chiba doing that on the floor and I wanted to, meet him because I was really interested in the dance. Is that the first time you ever saw someone breaking at Coney Island? Yes. What year? Whoa, that was 76 maybe. All right. Yeah. Wow, and you saw Chiba Rock. Yeah. Tell, you, me, tell me about that story. You saw Chiba Rock. Yeah, I saw Chiba Rock and I told a friend of mine that I was speaking to to get him to come to me and she said, which guy? I said, the guy doing that on the floor. So she went up to him and she told him, he came to me. He's a drifter. He was not living anywhere at the time. So he said he was hungry. I gave him $5. I told him, go right across the street, tell him that this is for the dime pitch and they'll give you a, a nice meal. And he waited for me for 12 when I got out and we went straight to the ball walk and I told him, could you please do some more for me? I want to see. And he did some more and he said, try it. And I went down and I tried it and I started to do a little bit of it because I pick up stuff fast. Uh -huh. I pick if something I like, I pick it up fast. Just like up rock, I picked it up fast. I learned how to up rock by my brother. He was in, Eli Whitney High School. I was in junior high school. Which junior high school? At Rico Fermi 111, junior high school 111. And I saw him doing that and I was like, wow. I was so interested in it that I started to learn. Making my own moves. Got it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And after you saw Chiba Rock, was there a relationship after that? Did he keep coming back? Oh, he... That day that he told me he was in the streets, I bring him to my home. He slept with me four days. He stood with me four days. And those four days, he kept teaching me more stuff. Then he left, because he has his mother and stuff like that, his dad. And um, when he came back, he goes, you're getting good, Speed. And I said, thanks, man. And he had left again and came back and he said, yo, you're getting better than me. <laughs> Cause I really do get into the stuff. Wow. I, I go 100%. That's awesome. Yeah. So you, you, you kind of let it out a little. You you know, you were watching your brother and your brother was rock dancing. Yeah. You know, so you, you were a rock dancer before breaking? Or did yes, you learn it? Yes, yes, I was. Cool. cool. From my brother. From your brother? Yeah. Can you talk to us a little about the rock dance and what you did? And he was in Eli Whitney, 
And he had buddies. He had a, a friend named Eddie Ed that also danced. Mm -hmm. And he came with that home. And I got so interested in it. And there we, we started to dance. Cool. Now, just to back up a little, um, what high school did you go to? I went to um, high, junior high school. No, I went to junior high school, 111. Then when I went to Coney Island, I went to um, Booty, Booty High School. Okay. I mean, Junior High School. Got then it. I went to Lafayette High School. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, what are, you, what are your, your funnest memories of those schools? You know, can you talk about them? Um, I honestly really didn't like school. Gotcha. I didn't. I, hear you. I didn't. I mean, I love being around the white women because I love white women. <laughs> They were cute. They were real cute. And um, so I started hanging out more at high school than in junior high school. Got it. I would hang out on the handball courts with them and all that. All right. Cool. Now, you, you talked about some gangs in, in Bushwick. Yes. Coney Island. Were there any gangs in Coney Island? Yes. Who were yes. they? They were the homicides. They were the dirty riders. And now they got the unknown bikers. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And they're out there now? Yeah. Do you, do you still live in Coney Island? No, I don't. Where do you live now? I live in the Bronx. Oh, where at? <laughs> 161st Street in Elton. Got you. Got you. And um, talk, talking back to the... So what you do? You, you, you're learning from Chiba Rock. You know, you're getting better than Chiba Rock. You know, yeah. or, or so he mentions. Yeah. You know... How do the Furious Rockers come about? How did okay. that happen? I'll tell you. Um, once I started dancing and they saw what I was doing, a lot of people started. I was the first b-boy in Coney Island. There was no one dancing b-boy. Chiba came, taught me, and I was the first one. And everybody started to dance. And I have had a bunch of friends from the neighborhood and there's one guy in particular that he had long legs. And I said, this guy could be a flexibility guy. You could throw his legs over his necks and all that stuff. Wow. So Who's I that? taught him. I gave him the name Rubber Band and I used to make him stretch out all the time. I used to be like, it's time, it's time to stretch. And he used to get mad, oh man. Because I used to stretch him out good. Right, right. I wanted him to be good. God. Wait, wait, so you, you, you got a bunch of guys from the neighborhood together and liked your dancing to be part of the crew. When did you form? What year did you form the Furious Walkers? Oh, God. That was in the early 80s. The early 80s? Yes. Cool. I'm not really too sure because I can't remember, but I think it was 80 or 81. All right. All right. Yeah. Who were the first members of the Furious Walkers? Uh, D-Rock. He used to up rock. He knew how to up rock, so that's why I put him in. Um, we got rock. He one day we was at the school, the church. I mean, and we were practicing, and he came out of nowhere, started doing flips. So I looked at him, and my brother was next to me. He's vice president. I told him, "What do you think about putting rock in our crew?" He was very built, and I said he could do air moves, he could lift us up. He would be perfect for that. So that's how Rock came into the picture. Got it. Um, Ringo, he, we used to hang out in the South Side a lot Got it. with um, Ringo and his brother Spin. Los Sures. Yeah, and I liked their routine. And I said, I think I want to put these guys down with the crew. But Spin never made it. Only Ringo. Ringo was there one hundred percent. Got it. Yeah. Cool. And uh, so, did you ever? Did you guys ever travel to battle other crews? Oh yeah. Where, where did you go and who'd you battle? We battled this crew called Master Dancers for shirts. All right. And we lost one shirt. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to mention who lost that shirt from the crew? Oh, uh, his name was Little Lou. Okay. Yeah. And um, they burned the shirt. Really? Yeah. 
But I said, that's good. It's going to bring us luck. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> did, did little Luby get upset when they burnt the shirt? Yeah, he was very upset. I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, man. At least we won most of the shirts. We only lost one. Right, right. And before we get a little more deeper into it, the B in B-Boy, what do you recognize that B for B-Boy? What does it mean? Well, it used, it came from the Bronx. It was called B-Boys because it meant Bronx boys. Okay. And the media is the one that made up breakdance. Right. We didn't make, make that name. Right there. It's just breaking. Right. It was breaking or b boy. Not breakdance. Breakdance was for the media. Right. Right. What What is What is being a b boy mean in your home? Oh God. It was the greatest. It was the highlight of my life. B boy has been the highlight of my life. Nice. I went places. We traveled around the world. We did three movies. Wow. Yeah. And um, we battled not only in the street, but we battled on stage. Right. Like the world championship we won. We did another one at um, uh, John Jay College, I think it was. We joined mm -hmm. one there. And we won that too. We did a lot of shows for schools, a lot, a lot of them. Right, right. How, how did you, how did you come about the name Furious Rockers? Okay, uh, my friend Chiba that I met, he used to roll. He used to my his father used to live in Rhode Island, and he used to go to Rhode Island a lot. And there was a crew called Furious Rockers out there, so. He came to New York and he told me, you should make a crew, Joe. And I said, I'm thinking about it. And he said, why don't you name them Furious Rockers? And that's how it came to be. All right. Yeah. Cool, cool. And um, tell us about, talk to me a little bit. You, you had mentioned Rubber Band. Tell me a little about Rubber Band. How'd you meet him? He was from the neighborhood. We knew each other from the neighborhood. Everyone that's in the crew, we knew since childhood in the neighborhood. But I started getting ideas, you know? I started to see that he had long legs and I said, he could be a flexibility guy. Right, right. You know? And and then it went like that. I, I got, I started to see what they could be able to do. And that's how I made my crew. Cool. Now, you know, it's really interesting. You, you guys are a Coney Island breaking crew. Yeah. Did, did you guys break right on the boardwalk? The, the the boardwalk was our stage. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Can you tell me about one of the best battles you, you performed on the boardwalk, if, if you ever did? Yeah, we did. Uh, I can't remember their names, but there was one that we were up rocking. And I don't know if you know, there's another crew called Break the Dawn. No. Um, they were battling them guys. So when I was walking through, he said, please help us, man, they're killing us. So I went in and I started up rocking. And when I, as I was going down, he put his leg between my legs. I mean, he put his hand between my legs and I turned over and he fell over. <laughs> that was a kill right there. Right. Yeah. Now I I saw some of the pictures you know in, in Coney Island and uh, did was there did the amusement park sponsor a lot of uh, breaking activities yes. or breaking events? Yes, Talk we worked to us with about that. Dino. We worked with Dino from the Wonder Wheel. From the Wonder his Wheel. His brother, his son Dennis. Dennis, I'm sorry, Stephen. Uh, Stephen was a DJ. He we performed at his uh, event. Um, Nathan's. Also, we worked with Nathan's Famous Franks. Yes, we did a lot of work for them. Wow. Yeah. So you, you had a relationship. Did they ever sponsor you? I see right now you, you got a yeah. I you sponsor got a badge, them. A patch there. I sponsor them. Taste <laughs> the flavor of New York. I'm gonna show them this. I'm gonna talk to them. Awesome. Yeah. 
because this was a long time ago that we did that event. Right, right. Yeah. That's that's awesome. And um, you got another patch on you, the yep. Swatch Watch. Yep, that's the one we won the world championship. Nice, nice. Let me go ahead and get a little close up okay. on that patch there. Cool. And then we got the Furious Rockers. The famous, there you go. This is the Daily News article. That's the photo from the Daily News article? Yeah. Great. So I have something to research and pull up. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about the relationship between you guys and Nathan's. Did they sponsor anything off the boardwalk or outside? Cool? Yeah, you we guys? went to 42nd Street. They have a Nathan's, had a Nathan's over there. Okay. And they used to have a giving out toys for tots. And we would perform there and give out toys to the kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. You did charity events. Yes. Great. We did a lot of uh, publicity, of course. You know, that's part of the game. You do a lot of publicity. That's how you get known and you get work. I also noticed, I mean, you know, sticking on the charity thing, you, you guys performed at a lot of schools. Do you remember... Which is the most memorable school that you performed at? The kids must have been going crazy oh, with, yes. with the breaking crew in their yes. school. There were so many schools, I can't even remember the names of the schools or nothing. Got it. It's so many. Right. We did a lot of those. But, you know, along with Toys for Tots, you know, and those charity events, you, you guys also did... Talk to us about the prison you visited. Oh, yes. We did a show at Oldersville Prison uh, through a friend that was incarcerated. Okay. He spoke to the warden and said that he has family, which David is family of him. And Who's David? Dave, D Rock, the one that's in my crew, D Rock. So he spoke to the warden, and the warden said, Yes, no problem. And we headed out there and we did our show. We started battling inmates. Really? Yeah, from stage. We started battling inmates. That's right. I mean, so you had inmates that could break. Yeah. <laughs> That ought to be awesome. Yeah. That had to have been really That great. was a great time right there. Wow, wow. Can, yeah. can you talk to us about uh, any other places you, you toured uh, in the United States? I know there was a big tour in Ohio you went to. Yeah. You know, tell us about We've that. We've been to Baltimore, Ohio. I told you, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, we did so much stuff in New York. We, we had a manager. She would get all the work for us. And she worked at the Roxy's, and we used to get in the Roxy's for free. Okay. Every weekend we would be there, unless we were traveling and doing stuff. What crews were at the Roxy? Um, I remember seeing Scrambling Feet. Okay. Um, uh, New York City Breakers, Rocksteady. It was a whole bunch. There was a whole bunch that I didn't even know. What's the most memorable battle at the Roxy for you? There was one battle that we had. Didn't know the guy's names, but we just we just hit it. Yeah. yeah. Any it's other such clubs? a long time. It's hard to remember. I hear you. I hear you. Any other clubs? That I went to, we went to Studio 54. We did some work there. Um, we never went to Funhouse because Roxy's was our home. Okay. Yeah. We used to get it for free. We knew everyone there. It was the place to be. Roxy's was the place to be. Right. Roxy's the old skating rink. Yeah. 10th right. Avenue and 18th right. Street. Do you know before they had the skating rink going, we used to practice there. Oh, really? Yeah. Our manager used to have us practice in there. Who was your manager? Ros Roseanne Hoare. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And talk, tell us about your, your practices at the Roxy. Every week? Every every day we were there for Harley. Wow. Yeah. You come up from Coney Island every day on the train and hit the yes. Roxy. Yes. Cool. And, and uh, you know, there's this one uh, B-girl, you yeah. know, that, that you remember well, Lady Flex. Yes, we taught her a lot, too. Talk to us about Lady The Flex. windmill she learned from us. The flexibility she learned from rubber band. Oh, wow. We all pitched in and helped her out. This is her right here. Wow, let's see that. 
She was a beautiful person. Her mother was great. She loved us. Thank you. And I've been I, trying how'd you, to find how'd you meet her. her. Have you been trying to find her? Yes, I've been trying to find her. I know her full name and everything, and I punch it, and I can't. They don't appear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But know. I'm gonna keep trying. Put a shout out. What's your name? Lady Flex. Hello, sweetie. You know us, the Furious Rockers. Remember us? Uh, we want to get in touch with you. See if you could find us. It would be awesome. Great, great. Now, as a b-boy, what, what were you known for? What was your, your strength? Was Mine it... was combination. Okay, talk I had, a combination. I didn't just have head spins alone. I didn't have just windmills alone. See, a lot of people practice a lot on head spins and practice a lot on windmills. I did a little bit of everything because when you're going to battle, you got to have a lot of moves. Right. You got to have a lot of moves. You're not going to throw power moves real quick when I'm going to be throwing some good moves and then I'll power move and I'm going to... I'm going to... take over on you. I'm going to I'm going to be right on there on you. Got it. Got it. And did you did you ever choreograph any any Oh, routines? I choreographed. I was the choreographer of my crew. Got it. I was so into breaking that I went to the library and to study dancing. All right. I found a book. It was a gymnastic book and I saw some nice old school stuff they had on there that I blended in with my routines. I had two-man routine, three-man routine, four-man routine, five-man routine, six-man routine. We were six of us. So we each had routines in case, because sometimes when we were hired, they would take only two of us. Okay. So I made sure I had a two-man routine, that way they could do it. A lot of times they didn't pick me. I was the first B boy. I started that. I started the whole crew, and two of my boys went first before me because they were older. I was too young. They were at the age where they're allowed to travel. Right. I told them, please, I'll let my mother sign a paper that it, it's accepted that I could go, and they said no. They don't do it that way. And most B-boys were underage. Yeah, we all started young. Wow, wow. And um, so in 1980, that's when your crew began more or less, right? Yes, yes. You know, what other crews existed on the scene when you began the Furious Rockers? What other crews? Start with Coney Island. Okay, um, there was a few, uh, um, Break to Dawn. Okay. Uh, Fresh Kids. Twice as nice. Uh, who else? There wasn't too many. There wasn't yeah. too many. Not too many? Yeah. How about Manhattan, the cruise? Manhattan was scrambling feet. That's one that I we really connected. Got it. Yeah. Any Bronx or Queens cruise that you guys connected with? Um. Oh, God, let me think. From Bronx, not too many. From Bronx, not too many. Alright, alright, cool. What are, what, when it comes to the music, what's your number one jam that brought you out, you know, to the floor? Just Begun. Just Begun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a classic b-boy anthem You know out there. that I give a lot of credit to my father. Okay. Because when I was about 11 years old, no, five years old, he gave me a transistor radio that I slept with on my chest every night and I listened to music. He's the one that got me in love with music. Wow. Yeah. That, that is an interesting story. A yeah. transistor radio guy. Yeah, one of those little, little ones that you put the 9 volt b battery in. Yeah, with, with, with the metal antenna and, yeah. and, and the dial. Yeah. And the little plastic dial. Yeah. I remember that. He wow. gave me that for Christmas for fifth, fifth. Oh, I was five years old. Wow. Yeah. And can, can you talk to us? Now, you, you guys, 
you guys perform not only on Coney Island, which is a huge venue. You, yeah. you know, people are always there. But you, but you guys uh, performed at Washington Square Park. Yes. Tell us about the first time you performed at Washington Square Park. Okay. Before I say anything about Washington Square Park, I'm going to say this, that when we were dancing in Coney Island, uh -huh. we were just dancing for fun. We didn't ask for money. We didn't even know that we could get money. And they started throwing money at us. And I said, holy smokes. So I took out a bucket and I, we started making money. And then I heard of Washington Square Park. And I said, I want to head there next. Because there you meet people. Right. And I met someone and he took me, took the crew to Baltimore. Who's that? Oh, his name was Odell. I think his name was. Okay. And where did he take you and, and what did you do? Baltimore. All right. Yeah, it was nice. And you went on tour there? You performed there? Yeah, it was just a, a little performance. That's all. And what Not are the crews? Big. Not I mean, big. Because uh, uh, there were a lot of performers in Washington Square Park. You had yeah. musicians, you know. There was the fireman. You know the fireman? Yeah. <laughs> he used to put the chair on his his chin and balance and do fire stuff with his mouth. That's right. Yeah. What are the crews, you know, did, did you meet there? I met Scrambly Feet there. Can you, can you tell us uh, the members of the Scrambly Feet that you remember? Stretch, Kids Move. Little flow. Nice. Yeah. All right. Great. We became so good friends that we were about we was about to name it the crew Scrambling. I mean Furious Scramblers. All right. So so did you did you practice with Scrambling Feet? Oh yeah. We always used to get together. Right. Always. In Brooklyn. We used to go they used to come to Coney Island with us or we used to go to East New York with them. Got it. Lower East Side, I mean. Yeah. That's what yeah. Now the uh, Scrambled Feet also had a chapter in Brooklyn, right? I'm not too sure. About Williamsburg? That. I'm not too sure. All right. Might have. Right. I had two members in Williamsburg from my crew. Oh, really? Yeah. Who were they? With Ringo. His name is Crazy Break when he was on our breaking crew. But Ringo is his real b-boy name. You know, his rock up rocking days name. Right. And... We used to go a lot to Williamsburg, Southside. Right. Yeah. All right. And we became good buddies. Really? Yeah. <laughs> did Did you ever work with any DJ on any tracks? You know, for your performances, or did you just whatever tracks the DJs play? I never had a DJ. No. You know what I had? I had my giant radio, the one with the alarm in it. Right. Yeah. The car alarm. Had, yeah. I had that and radio, sirens. so they would use reel to reels, you know the, uh -huh. and make our own music and make our own. We we did a, a a show, a story about us, and that's how we did it with the music from my radio. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You get you guys ever collaborate with any MCs? You know, kind of hype the crowd up. Oh, uh, we met um. Melly Mel, he was real good with us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Melly Mel, who else? Africa Mambara. He he took us a lot. He whenever he had little filming to do or whatever, he would call us and we would go. Uh, tell us about any any celebrities you guys met while you during your tours. We met um, Gene Kelly. And How about Dick us, Clark? Tell us a story about Gene Kelly. Sorry. Okay, we made a movie called That's Dancing, and that's where I met Gene Kelly. And I asked him for his autograph, and he gave it to me. Cool. And and what what, what did the Furious Rockers do in That's Dancing? We I, we came out in the beginning of this uh, movie they made. It was going way back to the days. When dancing was really started, okay, yeah, it shows the rocks, the people are dancing, you know, you know, like when they go into a cave mm -hmm. and you see pictures up, right, right, they show dancing. So he was talking about instead of lifting a hammer and and working, there's dancing, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> a history of dancing that led right up to you guys. Yeah. 
Wow. wow. Where, where'd you guys film at? With uh, it was at the Graffiti Hall of Fame. All right. Any anybody else you met there? Tell, tell no, us about that. No, it was just us and the crew, the, the crew that uh, were in the movies. You know, that worked for the movies. All right. Yeah. Any other movies? Uh, Delivery Boys. All right. He was on that. I met. Uh, Damn, I have it at the tip of my tongue. You know the guy that plays slow, the robot slow? No. Wes um Mario Peebles. Oh, okay. Mario Van Peebles. Mario Van Peebles, yes. We met him. We worked with him on Delivery Boys. And then we were on Crush Groove. Were you in Crush Groove? Yes. All right. What, what, what part do you have? What scene? We was the, the breaking scene. Okay. Yeah. Who, who'd you battle? Tell me about it. We wasn't a battle. It was just us throwing down. Got it. But we've battled a lot. Right. Now, you, you've traveled, you know, getting back to traveling around the United States, you also traveled to Texas. Yes. Tell us about where you performed in Texas. Texas, we performed halftime for the Houston Gamblers. Got it. Yeah, and we went to Italy, Las Vegas, Texas. You uh, performed at the Astro St. Thomas. Okay. Um, Baltimore, Ohio. We did a lot. All right. Tell us, tell us about the performance in in the Astro Dome. You know who performed. You know the it was me, three other guys from my crew. Me and two other guys from my crew. I mean, and Fable and Wiggles was there as well, and. And my manager was there as well. Got it. Yeah. And tell us about your Italy tour. Oh, it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. We when, went, what year did you did you go to Italy? Oh wow. It was eighty four, I think. We did a lot in eighty four. All right. We would come home and we would have to get ready to go to the next flight. That's how it happened. Busy we were on 1984. Was it after you guys won the championship, the Swatch Watch championship in 84? No, it was after that. Got it. Yeah. All right. And you, you, any, any other, like you, you performed or uh, you met Phyllis Diller? Yeah. You know, you want to tell us about that tour? Yeah, she was a very nice woman. Very nice. We uh, performed on stage a story about us, the Furious Rockers how we got started, and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I'd I, I love to find, to find <coughs> that footage. I wish I had the footage, too. You know how many stuff we did that they didn't give us footage? Right. Be... Some gave us footage, but a lot of them didn't give us footage. Right. Like Swatch, when we won the world breakdance, they didn't give us anything but the money. That's it. Right, right. Now, how, how long did... How long were you getting ready for the Swatch Squatch competition? Oh God, we had to, we had to uh, join in in different outfits, different routines to join that contest. Got it. Yeah, if you didn't have that, you wasn't getting in. Oh, wow. Yeah, but we had outfits. We had different routines. I, I'm a choreographer. I made my own moves, you know, as a crew in that. Yeah, do, do you remember any of the crews that were at that competition and, and who stood out and why? It was so many. Okay. So, so many. There was a crew called uh, All Star Breakers All right. from London. They were called the London All Star Breakers. They won the foreign crew. And I found out years later that they changed their name to Furious All-Star Rockers in the name of us. To be honored. Yeah. I was honored. When I heard that, I said, wow. That's, a, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, so back in the U.S., you know, uh, were there any other venues that, that, that you went to and you, you danced at any other clubs? I mean, you, the, you, the Roxy, you didn't go to the Fun House. Yeah. We went to 
uh, Studio 54. <coughs> we went some more, but I can't remember. My memory is very bad. Right, right. And, um, you know, I mean, you... not that bad because I remember a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. Uh, you know, if, if you had to say, you know, outside of the Furious Rockers, you know, the one B-boy, the one B-boy crew, you know, that challenged you the most, who would they be? Who would you credit? There was this guy named Bandit from the Fresh Kids. He always wanted to battle me. And I cooked him every time. Got it. Yeah. Because he only threw down windmills. Right, right. While he's throwing down a power move so quick, I'm doing a lot of footwork, swipes, air moves. I start going into power moves, you know? That's not how you battle. Right. That's not how you battle. Okay. Yeah. So what uh, what B-Boy stood out to you? Like, did really well, you know, that, that you got a lot of respect for? Float is one of them. Float. From the Incredible Breakers. All right. Yeah. Talk to us about When he came back, he came back strong. What do you mean he came back? He was he was sick. Okay. And he got well. And he started dancing. I was like, oh my God, Flo, you hitting it hard. He went out with a bang. Because he passed away. Right, right, right. He went out with a bang. Much respect. Yes. Cool. Did, did, you, did you ever uh, do any routines with Flo? Practice with him? Oh, we used to hang out a lot at the Roxy's. We, oh, forget it. He was my best friend. Really? Yeah. Awesome. I got pictures with him and everything. Yeah? Yeah. Did uh, did the Furious Rockers have any chapters? Uh, there's another Furious Rockers in Rhode Island that came first before us. Got it. Got it. The, did they have any beef or any problem with you using the name? Well, Chiba used to hang out with them in Rhode Island because his father lived over there. So when I started to think about making a crew, he said, call him call yourselves the Furious Rockers. So I said, oh, okay, sounds good to me. But then one day Ringo went to Rhode Island and they mentioned Ringo as being a Furious Rockers. So Eddie Ed, the press, he said, Who, who's Furious Rockers? <laughs> Eddie Ed was the press of Furious Rockers in Rhode Island. Yeah. And he said, who the hell is Furious Rockers in New York? And Ringo showed him the pictures and he couldn't say nothing because we done a lot of stuff. They didn't do much. Right. Yeah. But you owe your name to those guys. They were good. They were good dancers. Okay. And, and and who were the members of the crew? You said Eddie Ed was friends. Eddie Ed. I can't remember too many of the guys. Rick, uh, Chiba knows all of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was a crew called Return to Burn over there. Yeah. All right. And uh, we got the Olympics coming up in, you know, 2024. Yeah. You know, you, you won your Swatch Watch Championship with your crew. Yeah, and people don't want to acknowledge that. 40 years and later. And we upset with that. Or why? Because we won the first world breakdance contest in New York City. And a lot of people are not acknowledging what we did in, in, in the days. Right. You know, we should get a lot of props. You know? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first World Breakdance Contest. Wow. And um, so you got any reunions coming up with, with the Furious Rockers? I'm, I'm, I'm planning on doing something big. Okay. It's going to take some time, but I'm going to try to work it out. All right, cool. Because it takes money to do and, it, you know, I already have a couple of friends that said they're willing to help me. So that'll be great because I really want to do this. Right. I want to do a tribute to the Furious Rockers. All right. Tell us about what's on your mind. What do you, what do you want to do? I want to go and do it old school like we did back in the days. We used to perform on the ball. So I want to do the same thing all over again. Yeah, I want to get a linoleum, put it on the ballwalk, have some music, food, water, 
if Nathan could sponsor us, which I'm talk, going to talk to Nathan's, if they could sponsor us, we're good. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that sounds awesome. I that just went to a school in Coney Island, and I told them if they have parties going on in the gym, and they say yes. So they gave me a paper to fill out. I filled it out. I went back because they told me go back next week. I went back. I gave her the paper. She asked me, do you have a DOE vendors? That's Department of Education vendors license, I think it is. Okay. And I told her no. And she says, then you can't do nothing. Yeah. So I came up with the idea a long time ago. This idea has been in my mind for a long time ago that I want to do an old school hip hop on the ball. I'll, I'll be there. Set it up. I'll be there. <laughs> Appreciate that. <clears throat> if, if, if you had a mentor in breaking or b-boying, who would that be? Chiba Rock. Chiba Rock. Getting a lot yes. of props. He, yes. He started me off. We are good friends. We video chat all the time. He's still around today? Yes, he is. He's here in New York? No, Georgia. Georgia? Yeah. All right, down south. But he's my buddy. I love him. He he got me to where I was at. Did did you guys ever go to the uh, USA skating? No. No. She did. Who? She did? Chiba did. Yeah. All right. Cool. Did, did you guys attend the 1981 Lincoln Center battle? No. No? We didn't even know about that. Really? Yeah. I think at that time, we were just starting. Yeah. A little early. But I would have loved to have been there. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. You guys started in 1980. Yeah. 81 would have been really early for you guys. Yeah. You know? Was there... um? So, back, back to the Olympics. You know, wh what do you think about the judging and, and, and the performing? Anything to say? Well, I don't know. I don't know if you've kept track. I don't know who's going to be judging these contests because they need to know about breaking. They know they need to know what's good, what kind of moves they're throwing down, and if it's burning the moves, you know, they need to know a lot about breaking. Right, right. Yeah. You know. Have you kept track with any of it? I get online and I read a lot. I look a lot online a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So what's what's the future of B Boy look like to you? Well, it's going to the Olympics. That's great. That's great news. I would have ever thought that that would happen. And I wish the guys that are in it the best. Cool. Any, any memories of breaking you want to share with us? Any of your best memories, battles, just getting together in clubs? Breaking was the highlight of my life. Everything we did it's the highlight. All right. Any stories we didn't talk about? Anything you want to cover? Uh, I just loved traveling. I had never traveled before. And it was an honor for people that brought us into fame and have us tour around the world. And I feel real honored about it. All right. Now you you brought you brought something with you. You know that a lot of you know, I, I I've only done seven B boy interviews so far, at, but you came in with with two scrapbooks. Yeah. You know, and for me, I, you know, uh, being an archivist, uh, yeah, you just you know, that, that's my soft spot. When, yeah. When when I saw your collection of documents and flyers and and tickets and event programs. That was yeah. awesome. You you want to kind of like show it real quick? Sure. I you know? know. You want to do it right here? Or you yeah, we should do it right there. And then be right with us. I really got to get this fixed. Those are... These are the pictures. This is the beginning of it. Nice, look at that. Always a piece of graffiti in there. Yes. 
Yes. I used to do graffiti too. Did you? I used to draw. Like, did you write? Yes. What, what was your What was your tag? Speed. Speed. Yeah. Did, did you get up on any lines in particular? No. 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 I came after that. All that. Right. Right. <laughs> I was a good artist. That's that was my thing. I knew I knew how to draw. Right. That's how I made this. The guy in the center. Right there. Right there. I, I see made it. That. Cool. I made Doing flow work. Yeah, and I gave it to the guy, and he made the patch for me. Cool. Let r Run us through the scrapbook. Talk, okay. Talk this us is, through it. This is the beginning that we first started right here. Okay. Oops. <laughs> this is when we were at Washington Square Park. Right there, like that. Here. No, the like other this. way. Washington Square Park. Okay. We used to perform there. This was our first gig. It was for members only. They gave us outfits. Look at the hats, jackets. Got a lot of glare on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't hardly see it. Yeah, the, the the glare is not coming out. There you go, like that. Like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Bloomingdale's. We uh, did a show for them for a uh, style of clothing that they had. This is that stance in the movie we came out of. This is another part of dance dancing. This scene comes out in the movie. Which one? This scene right here with with, with Lady Flex. You see me just like this and my brother. Lady this Flex, my, there, is, you, there you go again. This is my real blood brother. Nice. He's vice president. What's his name? Fast Frost. Eddie Roman. Eddie Roman. Cool. Oh. This is the articles we came out of. This is when we first got to we were just getting to performing for the movie my mother was here too she's here somewhere my mother went a lot of places with us this is at the graffiti hall of fame they're a little dark faded like right right the camera wasn't too good this guy's important but i don't remember his name This is all from the movie. I mean, yeah, from the movie. This is um, the Graffiti Hall of Fame that we danced at. Like I told you, they had to do egg cool. at the cardboard we were at. Right. Yeah. They got all jealous and threw eggs at our cardboard. This is a set, set three that we were on. There goes Lady Flex again. This is all part of the movie. Oh, this is autograph from Gene Kelly, autograph from Dick Clark. This is Delivery Boys, the movie we came out of, me and my brother. Is it still glare or is it okay? Yes, sir. That's part of the movie. Cool. Can we like fast forward to any documents that you have? Okay, this is a. Uh, Coney Island dance contest we won. I'll show you right now. Oh, this is an air move we're doing. And is that rock? Yeah, that's rubber band right here doing its flexibility. This is us with our banner at the end of the routine. Yeah, I'll get to it. Okay. That? Nice. Okay. This is us with Nathan's. When we won the contest, in Coney Island, they wanted to take pictures of us with hot dogs. And it <laughs> came out on the Daily News and stuff like that. Nice. And that's their thing, hot dogs. Yeah. And this here is when we uh, performed at the Nathan's in 42nd Street. Got it. Uh, we gave out toys for tots. It was Christmas that time. So we gave out toys to kids. This is the same day. Of that same day, that was when we were performing. This is our our, our audition photo. Whenever we had an audition, we would give them that photo. Nice. This is my mom here. She went with us that day. Got this it. Is my cousin. Now your mom helped out the crew. What did she do? She was the treasurer of the crew. She would hold business. all the money, all the tokens 
for sneakers, because you run out of sneakers dancing. Right. You start right. looking hurt. Yeah. Yeah. This is Italy when we went to Italy. There's your boarding pass. Yeah. This is us on the bus. Name who who am I looking at? Is that that's okay. Fable? Fable and Wiggles went with us and a lot of poppers and lockers. A lot of poppers and lockers. I don't know if you know Normski. No. Okay. Normski was there too. This is us at the airport doing a, a little show on there. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. And any documents, any flyers? Here any... goes Fable and Wiggles right here. Okay, you want to see the documents? I'll yeah, the documents. yeah. Let's see. Okay, and uh, a lot of stuff with uh, with Furious Rockers credited. Yeah. You can tell my Mac, it's hurt. It's so old. This is part of the that's dancing. Got it. This was the paper that they had for us. This is an article that came out saying that that dancing was coming out at the Sigfield Theater. At the Sigfield? Yeah. Nice. This is for the movie Delivery Boys. Me and my brother, we get royalties. You're screen a member of the Actors Screen Guild. Actors Guild? Yes. Yes, we are. All right. Look at that. B-Boys. SAG yes. members. Yes. This is a... a, a a letter that a Mexican guy said that he wanted us to teach him. International fan letters. Yeah. This was a school that we did performance. We did a show for American Smoke Out. I can't really see what's this one, but it's something. This is a place that we performed that you can see, you can see the New York Furious Rockers. There you go. Yeah. You see Electric Boogie. <laughs> Old Flyers. Yeah. Nice. You, you also one. performed at the uh, Korean Parade. Yes. Here in New York. Yes, yes. You perform in a lot of other parades? Uh, we did um, the Puerto Rican Parade. We was on the Puerto Rican Parade. This is when Reed Street was coming out and Bel Harry Belafonte was in the Roxy's and we were dancing. Got it, got it. And this article came out on the Daily News saying something about us and stuff. This was uh, the modeling clothes we were modeling for uh, in hotels. Got it. It was a, a pre, they were called pre. This is part of Daily News. The center of part of Daily News right here. This is in Ohio. This is where we worked with African Islam. Nice. We performed here. This is in our church. We used to dance there. This is Father Gillespie. He used to let us dance there. He he would let us have our own section. This is the bomb top in, I think it was Pennsylvania. I'm not, if I'm, if I'm right. Because there's so much we did, it's hard to remember. And you've got it all documented. Yes. Which is awesome, right? This was when we performed in Las Vegas. They talked, we went to a, a place to eat mm -hmm. and they started playing music and my manager says, throw down for them. You guys performed in Vegas also? Yes. I was a model. I was modeling in ski wear clothes. <laughs> and yo, I did the elbow move with that jacket that it came out awesome. I would have loved to have that jacket. So over here in this restaurant, they did an article in the paper talking about me on how I was going onto my elbow, to my head and all that. 
awesome. This awesome. is Nathan's. This is the guy that we worked for in Nathan's. He's the one that started the break dance in the eighties. A performance on on the on the back of uh, Nathan's. Awesome. Yeah. So you owe a lot of your relationship to Nathan's. Yes, we worked a lot with Nathan's. With him. This is the payment we got. I still got the envelope and the card from the guy. He gave us this with the money in it, and I kept it. This is a picture of us with the money. This here, you can't hardly see it, but it's a cardboard saying uh, breakdance and stuff. Nathan's sponsoring breakdance and stuff like yeah. that. We're back, and Jose, Mr. Speed Break Roman, is running through his uh, scrapbooks of documents and memorabilia for us. And let's let's continue on. What do you got going on in front of us here? Welcome, okay. we, we Lima performed, Civic Center. We performed at the Waldorf Astoria. That's where I met Gene Kelly. Wow, yeah. wow. Let's take a look real quick at the Waldorf Astoria. Yeah, that's a beautiful hall. Yeah, you guys right here. On the next page is Phyllis Diller we met on in Ohio. She was a wonderful lady, real kind. She didn't care how many autographs she gave out. She was nice. Cool. Uh, uh, I almost met uh, Nigel Mullenny. Right. And I almost got her autograph. She came to me to give me the autograph, and she said, that's it. I was like... Liza Minnelli, huh? Oh my God, man. No autograph for you today, huh? No. <laughs> I guess. Kind of it's a shame. Yeah, she was. You know, one of those people that they act all that. They shit don't stink. Full of themselves? Yeah. Ah, it's a shame. She was like that. It's a shame because her daughter was kind of. Um. Want to hold the book up? Yeah. This is Hot Tracks. We used to come on Hot Tracks almost every week, I think. Or two times a week. There's your visitor pass. Yeah. November 21st, 1983. Look at that. And then here. What Capri, does that say up top? Capri. What Zoot was Capri? Capri? Yeah. The magazine. Yeah. It was a magazine. We came out on it, and I never got a copy. Got it. That's how they were. They, they didn't care to give us a copy. Right, right. You know? And I would have loved to have the copy. This is part of Nickelodeon, I think. Got it. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And then over here, sideshows by the seashore. Yeah. Coney Island, USA. Yeah, we performed there. I see. There you go. You guys. Two we, days. Two there. days we performed here. This is the school that I used to teach. Uh, Leslie Studio. Oh, did you, you used to uh, teach uh, breaking and dancing yes. professionally? Yes. Leslie Dance and Skate School. Yes. Sweet. I was ah. there for quite some time. Here's Sweet. the Korean parade. Yeah. 1984. Right. Oh, yeah. they got you fresh as the champions. Yeah. I think that was after the championship? No. no. Oh, there's not, the photo oh, on the back. This is 1984. Wait. Right. So it might be. It has our name in the inside, I think. Yeah, right here. I always mark it so you can see it. <laughs> There you go. Awesome. Wow. What a variety of performances, events that you guys have went to. Yeah. We you did. guys, the Furious Rockers, have, have had a very you know, people in the, successful in our, career, no? In our own neighborhood didn't know how well we did. We had the Breakers Reunion in Coney Island, and I made a big display out of wood that took right. me a while to make. And they opened up with pictures on it. And they were saying, we didn't know you went to Italy. We didn't know you went to Texas. 
They didn't know about us. You know, they thought we were just dancing. That's it. But they didn't know that we were doing it professionally. Wow. Yeah. And you guys were at this point were getting paid. Oh, yeah. Tours. Yeah. Yeah. This is just some papers that I got from some stuff we did. And then you got a nice little flyer here. Yeah. Let me go this, ahead and, and lift up and look at that. Here, she loved us. She started to take pictures and she said, I got pictures for you guys. Give me your address. And she gave us a whole bunch of pictures. Dear Furious Rockers. So you guys had a fan base, yes. fan mail. Yes. yes. Sweet. You good? Yeah. Look at this these is, here. This is uh, John Jay College, I think it was. No, New York City Community College that we joined and we won the conference. Look at Lady Flex here. So was, was Lady Flex a furious rocker? She was like part of the crew because everywhere we went, she showed up. <laughs> cool, cool. Because I used to teach her. Rubber band used to teach her flexibility. You know, everyone had a part to give her. Right. Yeah. This is in Rhode Island. This now, it's, what does it say there? Furious? Furious Rockers versus Return to Burn. Got it. Return to Burn. Yeah. Another crew. That's the uh, Rhode Island chapter. Got it. Got it. See, Scrambling Feet, I think, is here. Is yeah, it? Scrambling Feet Rockers right there. Is it? No. Yes, sir. Right there. Let me show you. Put it on camera for everyone. Scrambling feet rockers right there. Oh, okay. Now I see. Much respect. Hard to get archives on the scrambling feet rockers these yeah. days. Wish we had. Some. I, I wish I had pictures of them and all. I don't. I started to get a camera when I started to see that we were traveling. Right, right. Then you started to document. Yeah. But I mean, you were collecting materials from the very beginning. Oh, yeah. You know, you got you got airplane ticket stubs on Alitalia, yeah. you know, proving. You know, these oral histories are never meant to be historical fact, right? This is just another piece of research that you want to tie in with these documents to corroborate, you know. So it's yeah. awesome that, that you've got all of these documents yeah. to support your stories. They're not just stories, yeah. you know. You've got the paperwork. And that's awesome, you know. You know, you guys have done a great job, man. You've done a great job in number one, leading your crew, yeah. documenting their history, and I wish you all the best with, uh, you know, setting up a, you know, a Love reunion. You. Yeah. You know, that that'd be awesome. Yeah, I will invite you. Definitely. Awesome, man. I'd, I'd love to be. I will definitely be there. Yeah. You know, for sure. And. Uh, so, what does being from Brooklyn mean to you? I love Brooklyn. I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Brooklyn was everything to me. When I was growing up there, I loved it. Got it. Yeah. But now you live in the boogie down. Yeah. You know? I wish to go back. You'd like to go back to Coney Island? You miss back. it? Yes, I do. And I'll be you know, straight with I the Bronx the and Coney Island, and I'm not saying. I love the music on the boardwalk. I love the, the beach. I love the, the the pier. You know all that. Right. I miss it. I, I I don't hang out too much in the Bronx. In the summertime, I'm in Coney Island. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Great. And anything we didn't cover, you want to go ahead and uh, make sure that we mention. No, I think we covered everything. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And. And Lady Flex, if you out there, you know her real name? Oh, I got it somewhere. I don't know. If, let me see if I can find it. Yeah. We want to make sure that you guys, old acquaintances, old dancing colleagues, yes. meet she back up. That, that'd be awesome for you guys to do that, man. And I need my glasses. It's in here. No worries. No worries. We, we could probably pick that up later and, and, and find her name. This is all about the breakdance concert. 
the, the world breakdown. Got it. Was she was she down with you guys at the Squatch Watch? No. She no, wasn't. she wasn't there. No, no, she wasn't. I don't know why she never showed up. Oh no! Don't tell me I don't have it. I know I had it, but I have took it out looking for her. I tried her real name. I tried Lady Flex. Some other Lady Flex was showing up. Got it. Is it, now you know see, real quick be, be, before before we uh, finish the interview. Yes. Any other B girl stand out to you that you wanna you know that impressed you when you were young that you wanna give a Honestly, shot? Honestly, when we were breaking, there wasn't too many B girls. All right. The only one B girl that I know and I love this woman because she's a good friend of mine is Kim. Oh, Kim who? Oh. Kim Akazi. Yes, exactly. She's yes. a she's a Brooklyn girl. Yes. She was married to one of my guys. All right. Yeah. So we used to hang out in her house all the time. And she was great. She made sure we had food in the refrigerator to hang out. She's, she's a wonderful person. Got it, got she's it. Wonderful you, you guys ever perform with Kimikaze? Oh, uh, no. She was down with Dynamic. Right. And then she had a little crew of her own with some girls. Dynamic Dolls. Right, yes. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Got it. Look, see, guys, this is the power of documentation. Stay right there. Okay. This is the power of documentation right here. This is her right here. Ten-year-old. Wow. Dina, Lady Flex. Her Cab Cabrera is her last her, her name. Cabrera. Cabrera. Ten-year-old Dina, Lady Flex Cabrera, was born in Brooklyn and has been been breakdancing only since last fall. Yeah. A student at PS 181, she reads, swims, skates, and likes both gymnastics and computers. She's already appeared in a movie called That's Dancing yeah. and has breakdanced her way through the Roxy, the Red Parrot, the Plaza Hotel in New York City. There you go. Diana or Dina, Lady Flex, Cabrera, yeah. the Furious Rockers, Want to hook up with you and reestablish your relationship as yes, a Dina. as a breaker? Yes, Dina. I want to see you. I really do. I've been looking up to see if I find you. Please get in touch with us. And hopefully you'll be there for the next uh, Furious Rockers reunion. I would like you to be in the event that I'm going to make. Awesome. Awesome. Jose... Yes. Mr. Speedbreak Roman, yes. thank you for being with us here today. Like I said, it's been on. A dancer, a b-boy, and lifetime president of the Furious Rockers. Yes. Thank you. No. Thank you. <laughs> Peace, my brother. Peace.